And now to our lab, Whoa. where we do incredible experiments. Oh, it's disgusting. To show you how your body works. It's not pretty to look at, but it is brilliant stuff. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, it's all about our peepers. Your eyes are amazing. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. Actually, a lot of people have told me that. Not mine. your eyes, everyone else's eyes. In fact, your eyes can move over 100,000 times in a single day. Now, we know that our eyes come in all sorts of different colours, but if I look into Chris's eyes... Stop that. If I look into Chris's eyes, all I can really see is the coloured bit, the iris, and the black hole in the middle, the pupil. But there's a lot more going on. It's time to delve a little deeper. This is my digital ophthalmoscopic slip. It's Chris's eye camera. This will let us look at Zahn's eye super close up. Wow, that's amazing. So this is Zahn's eye. Now, the coloured bit of the eye here is called the iris. And the colour of the iris depends on the amount of pigment in it. Zahn's got a brown iris, which means he's got lots of pigment. And people with less pigment have blue or green, lighter coloured eyes. And the iris is a ring of muscle surrounding the pupil. And the pupil's black because it's a hole going right through to the back of Zahn's eyeball. Your iris and pupil work together to help you see and to show you how Chris is going to use this torch, which is specially made for looking at eyes. I'm going to shine it into Zahn's eye, and you'll see his eye will detect the extra light and contract the pupil. When I take it away, there's less light and the pupil gets bigger again. This is what happens when you go to a dark place like a cinema. Your iris opens your pupil right up to let in as much light as possible so that you can see. But if you go to a bright place like a sunny beach, your iris closes your pupil right down to let in less light because you don't need all that light to see. Now I want to show you even more about the eye, but the only way I can do that is by taking one out and chopping it up. Woo! Don't worry, Zand, I'm not going to chop up your eyes. I got some from the butchers to help us with our experiment. This is a pig's eyeball. Wait, 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 wait. What do you call a pig with no eyes? Pug. <laughs> That's really bad. Now, these pug's eyeballs are very similar to human eyeballs, and to show you what's going on inside, we're going to cut one open. Obviously, we're trained up to do this. We need to get the lens out because it does something really brilliant. Oh, oh there you go. That, Look that at went that. really well. Now, the lens receives all the images and sends them to the retina. And the retina completely covers the back of the eye. So it's a bit like the sensor in a digital camera. It captures the image and then sends the information to the brain for processing. But just to make things a little bit more complicated, when the image lands on the retina, it's upside down. And that's because light rays bounce off everything you're looking at travelling in straight lines. But your lens is curved, so you can focus on different objects. When the straight lines hit the curved lens, they bend, and the image hits your retina upside down. And we can prove it. I've taken the lens out of this eyeball. I want you to look through it and tell me what you can see. Yeah, you're upside down. Now, we appear to be upside down, and this is what's happening inside your eye. But if the retina receives the information upside down, why aren't we seeing the whole world upside down? Well, the answer is that when your brain receives the upside down image, it cleverly flips it over so the world seems the right way up. I said it cleverly flips it over so the world seems the right way up. 